When I first started this channel, nobody would have believed that any private company had any ambitions whatsoever when it came to Mars, aside from SpaceX and Elon Musk. I mean, why would anybody have any interest in this faraway planet? There isn't a lot of immediate commercial returns that we're talking about going to Mars, no real resources that a company could exploit that couldn't be much easier exploited on the moon. Moon, so why the hell would anybody have an interest in going to Mars unless they had some sort of crazy notions about colonization? Well, it turns out that SpaceX has two commercial competitors when it comes to the first commercial mission to Mars, one of which we've known about for some time, and that's Virgin Orbit, Richard Branson's brainchild, which intends to send a small orbiting probe, kind of a small CubeSat to Mars, not very ambitious, but at the same time, the first commercial mission to Mars, but far more ambitious, is what Relativity Space and their partners at Impulse Space have in mind, and that is to actually set down on the surface of the Red Planet. And if everything goes according to plan, they will beat SpaceX to the punch and become the first private company to actually set down on the surface of another world. Hello YouTube, I'm the Angry Astronaut, and this is... First of all, a quick reminder for those of you who didn't see my release yesterday, I finally got in my British Spaceflight merchandise, and I'm telling you, I love it. This unique design created by one of my most devoted followers, the incomparable Darth Rust, is an amazing piece of work, and as you can see, full color on both sides, links in the description. Okay, let's move on to what Relativity Space has in mind. Unsurprisingly, Surprisingly, they intend to use the Terran R in order to send this upcoming mission to Mars. Tim Ellis, the CEO of Relativity Space, is just as motivated to get mankind to Mars permanently as Elon Musk is. Unlike his former employer Jeff Bezos, Tim Ellis does not mock the idea of going to Mars and making these pointless comparisons to Antarctica or the top of Mount Everest or anything like that. He fully believes in the concept of mankind becoming a multi-planetary civilization with the Red Planet being our first choice of destinations, and he intends to use the Terran R to facilitate that. Now, obviously, it can't do the same things that Starship can, but it still has some very impressive capabilities, including 20 metric tons all the way to low Earth orbit. But in conjunction with their partners at Impulse Space, they're capable of a lot more. Impulse Space has only recently arrived on the scene, at least as far as media exposure is concerned. They were founded by a man named Tom Muller, who used to work for SpaceX, and the whole concept behind their mission statement is last mile space payload delivery capabilities. What this means is, is they're providing a vehicle that will assist a satellite, for example, to achieve higher orbital trajectories than it was originally delivered to. This is a concept that other companies are working on as well, but it seems that Impulse Space might have an advantage as far as price points are concerned. Impulse Space are designing and building these orbiting maneuvering vehicles from the ground up, which means most probably they're building all this stuff in-house, which tends to keep costs down. Vehicles that are capable of delivering multiple payloads to unique orbits from a single launch. But one of the most unique vehicles that they have in mind is something called a Mars Cruise Vehicle. Now, in my opinion, this vehicle is designed to deliver payloads to a variety of different planets, not just Mars, and it's designed to be integrated with a variety of different probes, which could be used for orbiting purposes as well as setting down on the surface of planets. But but here's a rough diagram of what they have in mind. Not very detailed, but it comes complete with 160 watt solar panels, star trackers for navigation, an antenna for communicating with Earth, obviously, and also stage engines which seem to be designed in-house. 
Now the lander is even more straightforward once it successfully enters Mars atmosphere protected by a traditional clamshell heat shield it will simply set down on the surface of the planet utilizing a quad engine setup which in my opinion is also going to be designed in house. They're also using 3D printing on their fuel tanks copying relativity space in that regard but as you can see there's no kind of scientific payload included with the lander. In my opinion, they intend to get third parties to invest in this mission and to provide their own scientific payloads to go with the lander, which is ingenious. It means the expense of the mission is going to be extremely low, only the cost of the Terran R, plus the Mars cruise vehicle and the lander with no scientific equipment included, that will be provided by somebody else. But the advantage that this represents to third-party scientific institutions is the fact that they're going to be able to deliver their scientific payloads on the surface of Mars far more affordably than any other alternative. Now, it's not going to be as ambitious as the Curiosity rover, for example, but still, it could be a substantial scientific payload which might include life detection experiments which have not been included on NASA probes since 1976. It's time to change that, and what a breakthrough it would be if a private company would be the first institution to discover life on another world. And as I said before, Relativity Space is not the only company involved in this game. Virgin Orbit is also collaborating with a consortium of Polish companies and universities to send the first orbiting small sat to Mars. Yes, it will orbit Mars, not land on Mars, but still the first commercial mission to Mars potentially if they win the race. They're also going to be using a breakthrough upper stage, which will include an ion engine in order to deliver the payload more efficiently. So lots of technological breakthroughs involved with this mission on top of it being the first commercial mission to another planet. This is a race. It's a race not only for bragging rights, but potentially for more scientific discovery on Mars as we prepare for the first human expedition to the Red Planet. But it's worth mentioning that thus far, Virgin Orbit has not sent a single mission beyond Earth orbit, and Relativity Space certainly has not sent anything into space whatsoever. SpaceX definitely has a leg up and the lead thus far, but that could change overnight. Personally, I find this to be a very exciting development. It means all of these companies are going to be aggressively competing to be the first successful commercial mission to another planet, and that can only mean good things for space enthusiasts. Please smash that like, hit that subscribe, check the description for various ways to support my channel, and stay angry about space!